So now I'm going to tell a little bit about uh, the challenges of five axis milling. So in this case, now we have actually a 3D scan of a famous statue in Oslo called the Angry Boy, which we have run a, a, a simple slice uh, logic where we, we have sliced it in a, in a Z direction to get extract tool paths. And, uh, and you can see we have paused the simulation right in the middle as it is at, uh, as it's at its body. And there are a few uh, sort of principal challenges. Is one is like when you can move in five axes, it gets much more complicated to plan your route because now we have a lot of definition following the contours of its body in this direction. But when we get a par a parallel to the slicing direction, we actually get very low amount of resolution. Uh, so ideally, you want to plan your tool paths from multiple directions, not just from uh, along one direction. And then another one is, for instance, you can see here when we have uh, the arms of the statue, uh, how does you know your logic know that there's an arm there and it cannot just you know revolve around his hand? You can see actually in this case, this the milling bit is hitting the hand, and you can see we have put a, a primitive uh, uh, crash analysis here where we we draw a comb based on the actually the size of the spindle. So you can see this is the point underneath uh, his shoulder where the bit is at the moment. Then we make a cone going outwards, and then we do an intersect where we analyze the intersection points. You see where the pin coin is, cone is intersecting the, the arm. Uh, we identify uh, the, the amount of crash, and then also how much correction we would need to do. And then the blue cone is then representing the attempt in order to correct that tool path. And so the, the color coding is used to show whether there's a, an error or not. So if you now advance the simulation, uh, you can see as we move past the uh, uh, arm, there's no, it's no problem. It's only a blue cone. There's no a red cone because you can see there's no problem milling the back here. But you see really well here in the actual simulation that you know, the, the milling bit is completely free of the, I say it's, there, there's no collision between the milling bit and the geometry. So then the, the complicated thing to solve is how, how would you plan a route so that you don't actually hit, uh, actually try to have that arm revolve past the milling bit? I can show you what would happen then. You can see here if that arm comes and then smack, it gets knocked off. So you need to, to plan your paths around that. And then you also need to know if you're trying to, to, to make an impossible angle, uh, how much, how do you cor do correction and how much do you correct? So we can, uh, if we now increase our slicing resolution, so we have here a slider called uh, step over, which is now set to 10 millimeters. So if you put that down to two millimeters, it's gonna take a little while to recalculate the tool path. And you can see here, we have actually now uh, a lot higher and we can see a little bit more extreme, like how the, when the tool path is, is following uh, uh, perpendicular to the, to his body, it's, it's, it's giving a lot of definition, but then coming to, for instance, to the head, like similar challenge as with 3D printing slicing, we lose where the, the distance between the path increases. And, and we can actually go and turn on that layer where we have identified only the, this is sort of where, where I, we got stuck, where here we have identified the parts of the geometry where we have multiple objects in a way. So instead of having, for instance, just a head, we have here the, the torso and the arms, and then actually the geometry in between them. And then the most basic workaround that uh, we have identified is to, to, to then make one single curve out of this. So the, the, the milling bit will, will come to sort of the, the closest point between the torso and the um, and the uh, and, uh, hand, and then we'll move out to the hand, go around the hand, and then come back, and then move back into the torso. So it'll just be one toolpath, one slice in the end, instead of having three independent sort of roots. And then these are the, the challenges you encounter after a promising proof of principle. And, and this is also one of the reasons why Really good five axis tool app, a pop software is really expensive and still surprisingly shit sometimes.